he still scored. Celts are going to stay with what got him here. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Shara Kepler. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hey, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends talking about how good Kevin McHale was. The great Boston Celtics player that unfortunately could have been even better, but because he was a sixth man, I think he didn't get the credit that he deserves. But that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. Let's get right into it. Now the first two players opinion that we're going to take a look at are from Dr. J and Bill Walton. Bill Walton obviously played with Kevin McHale and Dr. J had his rivalries with Kevin. Let's have a look. This guy's mind, his, his creative imagination, his skill set, his footwork, his touch, his shooting, and then his trash talking. It was just absolutely incredible. He was a tremendous opponent to have too with those big square shoulders and you know, is, is as awkward as he might have seemed sometimes on the court. He always knew where he was going and he knew what he was doing. And he was probably the most feared guy uh, in Boston by the 76ers. You know, we played, when we played them. You know, I knew if I, if I beat Bird or Maxwell, Mikhail was going to beat him. Kevin wasn't afraid to, to take a shot at you. You know, he was a, a critical piece to the puzzle. And, and there were many nights when he was the MVP in Boston. So one night we're, we're playing against the Celtics and McHale really has it going. And, and uh, he's, he's torching, you know, our power forwards, you know, Kent Benson, you know, Earl Curitan. And, and finally, you know, he started saying he's got these guys in the torture chamber. So every time they would enter the basketball into him, he would, he would holler, chamber, like, you know, he got him in a torture chamber, and, you know, it's too late. So I was coming back to double team, and he was looking down at me shooting like, you, you, you're too late, I. there's nothing you can do about this. Now the next player's opinion that we're going to take a look at is from a former teammate and obviously one of the greatest players of all time, Larry Bird. Let's take a look what he has to say. Talk about lies, one and all the other great ones. They're great, but... Uh, uh, Kevin is, was as good as, as anybody I've ever seen. Uh, he probably gave up more than anybody. Um, he didn't demand it. He, he liked his shots. Oh, that was a heck of a play. And I think everybody, when you play in a really good team, everybody sacrifices for each other because, but it's not a sacrifice. It's, it's just that if, if Robert had it going, which he did many nights, we, he just got the ball. If, if Robert and Larry had it going, I just knew I wasn't going to get as many shots. It's no big deal. You know, the next night might be my night. We got ours. And, and you know, our goal was that one more point than the other. When team. I got there, Kevin was like the sixth man. So he was coming off the bench. Every once in a while he would start, but he had a routine. Shoot around, he would sit on the sideline. And Larry was screaming, like, Kevin, get your butt up and have a shoot around. And he would tell everybody, hey, you want it now at 10 o'clock or do you want it at 7 o'clock? You tell me which one you want. I only give it to you once a day. It's okay. <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't say that. I, I'm a rookie. You know, I'm like, I might can't say that, you know? Kevin McHale um, taught me more about basketball, I would say, than, than any big man coach. The way he would move his body, lean, you ever see, it looks like his body is halfway leaned over him, halfway down, but his head is up here. It's just a weird look. And how he would spin catch you, make you go up, lean under you, get under you, make you foul. You know, once he caught the ball, you were at his mercy. So, the best. Kevin McHale, he's got the best post moves in all of basketball, the best footwork in all of basketball. And this storied history of tremendous rivalry in professional basketball takes on a new chapter. The Philadelphia 76ers versus the Boston Celtics. 
Or you can get out there. You have this wingspan. <laughs> so I might as well just take a jump shot. He's all the way down here. Julius blocked by McHale. When you're talking about signature moves, Kevin McHale uh, and the dream shake, Hakeem Olajuwon. I think they're the two best. Mm -hmm. so, and I played many years against both of those guys. And Kevin McHale, they got, it got to the point where they were calling him a man of a thousand moves. Could not guard him one on one on the box because he had such great footwork and he did a great job of feeling the contact. And once he felt you, you were done. If the double team didn't come right away, forget about it. He had too much stuff on the box. My, actually, my personal nemesis is Kevin McHale because he was such, he's the best player I ever played against. You could not stop him. I've always said that you could not stop that guy. It was, and on the other end, I had to use every ounce of energy I did to score on him. That guy, when I, look, when I looked at, because we all look at the schedule, we're like, okay, I can have some fun that night. Uh-oh, uh-oh, better get a good night's sleep that night. I mean, we all say the same thing uh, about different guys, but Kevin McHale is the best player I played against because he was unstoppable offensively and he gave me nightmares on defense. One of the great, great power forwards that have ever played in the NBA. Kevin, he was a gamer. He was an ultimate gamer. You throw the ball to him, you might not get it back because he, he can score on anybody. He won't throw it back to you. It's called a black hole for, the, for a reason, but he was one of the best scorers in the post with all the moves. Uh, Daryl Dawkins, his name is Ducks. But Kevin McHale's name is Moves. You know, he, had, he had one called Slippery Hill, yeah, one called it Shake and Jake. It's like, it, it got so many names for, for moves. And they'll just score it anytime you want because it's tenacity. Both KG good, good. and Kevin, because two guys who were great in the low post, and obviously and one was a mentor to the other, Mikhail being to Garnett. Right. You know, how prevalent will the low post game be in the next five years. We, we, we see all the stretch fours and we talk about it all the time, but here are two guys that were sitting down there. You know, obviously Diesel is one of them as well, but we're talking about guys who the skill was magnificent over the power. So what do you two guys think that's going to happen in the next five years? When you think about the post it being a big man, pounding physical presence, and then all of a sudden around the 80s you start to see um, you know, to Kevin McHale, to Jack Sigmas, to Charles Barkley's, Adrian Dantley's, guys that took the post and took a, a finesse kind of approach to it. But there's one name that's too often left off the list. The name of a guy who routinely gave some of the greatest to ever lace them up. The business. <laughs> I, I have no idea why, because he, he wasn't very athletic, but for some reason... He knew all the little tricks, and he drove me crazy when I played <laughs> against him. Like he, like, he kicked my butt more probably than any player that I played against. As I was growing up, when we was playing against the Celtics, the Celtics would come in, and, you know, they knew they was going to beat us no matter how we start the game. In Chicago, the Celts against the Bulls. Kevin McHale, look at this great pass to Robert Parrish. McHale himself had 31 points on the night. He said he was so sure that they were going to beat the Bulls, he said he didn't even bring a change of clothes. They just knew we were going to fold and they were going to come back and beat us. You know, Kevin McHale would, you know, would talk more trash than anybody have ever seen, and Bird as well. But they knew they were going to win. As we go to break, a little trash talking. What did you used to tell people in Game 7? Or in closeout games uh, when they were in uh, uh, I don't Boston. Even want to hear. I used to tell them all the time. I said, look at now, when we get done tonight, just shut off the lights. Because you know what? This game's over. I said, when the closeout game, I used to tell Johnny Lucas, I said, John, you know where the lights are in this place first time? He said, what for? I said, I said, because you know, I said, we're getting ready to shut the lights off on this place. So you tell them before the game. I got one of those, right? <laughs> closeout game. I'm I'm going up, it's about maybe five seconds to go in the game. I go up to shoot, Miguel goes, I that is your last shot of the season. <laughs> I hope you make it. <laughs> he averaged 26 points a game while shooting 60% from the floor and 80% from the line. You know how many NBA players have averaged 20 or more points, shot 60% from the floor and 80% from the strike in the same season? 
one Kevin McHale so how good was Kevin McHale in my opinion well as I said in the beginning of the video I think that if he wasn't a sixth man for a period of his time I think he would have gotten a lot more appreciation because this guy was insane and not only talking about his great post game his basketball IQ this guy was a sensational basketball player and definitely belonged in the top 50 rightfully so so Kevin McHale you are great in my books all right you guys that was it for today's episode don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel and hopefully I see you next time on the basketball time machine.